Okay. Hey everybody, Kay here on my Tennessee homestead. And I just want to introduce, I'm very excited about part two of preserving the harvest. And what you're going to see is some of the purple hole peas that I've dried and saved. And I'm going to make juice out of my first cluster of grapes that I've ever grown in my life. I made another pot of the pea stew, which you can see the, the details in part one. I made three more quarts and put that in the freezer. And then I dehydrated okra to grind it into powder. And after that, I, um, what did I do after that? <laughs> oh, there's so much. So just sit back, relax, and see what all I am preserving from what I've grown here at the Late Bloomer Garden. And I finish up by a test run dehydrating the Egyptian spinach leaves and grinding those up. So that went well, and so I'll be doing a lot more of that. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the harvest. Those shells had those beans inside. I find it very hard to determine from the shell when I'm picking as to the exact ripeness or development of the seed. So sometimes I get them and the seed is still a little bit green and then sometimes you open it and it's nice and creamy like that and it's just perfect and then sometimes you open it and it's a little bit more developed and that could actually almost go over here but I like to get them pretty dry to go ahead and finish drying so I'd rather have something a little bit more dry but not as hard dry and go ahead and cook this. These are purple hole peas. I harvested these yesterday. This took me an hour and a half to shell. And I'm sure my grandmother could have done it faster or plenty of farmers could have done it faster. These shells do zip open pretty well if you nail it, if you pick it at exactly the right time. They're hard to open if you picked it too soon. So, really hard to know, like that. That would be perfect, because no more green here, and the skin is very thin, and it just zips open. And of course it zips open very easily when they're dried as well. So now what I'm going to do is I will wash these and cook them and make them into ready-to-eat meals put in the freezer like I did in the last video and these I'm just preparing for drying and the way I'm going to do that is I've already sorted through a preliminary sorting but as you can see this particular seed is kind of shriveled and funky and weird and I take everything like that out. The way I've been doing it is I use a pizza pan that already has holes in it. That bowl makes about enough to cover the surface of this tray. And what you want to do is be able to see underneath. So if you try to do this in a big bowl, in the little ones will drop to the bottom and it's always hard to kind of get that. So I'm just going to see that. I'm going to put over here. And I'm just going to look through here and look for any shriveled up pieces. If you buy a bag of beans or peas, you might even find some stones in there. I don't find stones but I do find rejects. So you just want to pick through these and when you get them nice and cleaned out, I just let them sit here for a few days and dry out because those air holes underneath and these grooves here provide a little air which helps to dry it. And then I can always turn on the ceiling fan.
I just noticed something and I wonder if you can see it as well. This is just natural light coming in through the window, but once they've been sitting and drying for a few days, as these have, they're just a little bit more gray than the ones that just came out of the shell. Even though they had almost completely dried in the, in the shell, most of these, they're still a little bit warmer color and they get to be a cooler color once they dry out. And you don't want to store them before they get completely dry. Hi, BJ. Hi. I can see this tree from my kitchen window. And this morning, I noticed there were two big fat figs ready to harvest. And I thought, let me just get my beans. Let me just get my beans done first. They'll be fine for an hour. Are you hot? Is that why you're all stretched out like that? <laughs> they like to expand the contact with the cool floor when they're hot. Just an update on my Moringa. This has been happening. After all of that rain, now usually when leaves turn yellow on Moringa, it's too much water. But because this is in a pot, I have a feeling perhaps it's not getting enough. Oh, did it go away? No, there it is. It's so bright, I can't see. Look at that. Look at that. That looks like a... What does that look like, guys? An elongated ladybug that's lime green. I know it's a bad bug. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is on my hand. I just wanted to give you a look at my dragon fruit cactus that I brought from California. These are the two that made it. I propagated some cuttings off of my huge, huge dragon fruit cactus, which was 20 feet tall and a number of different limbs growing up in my tree in my front yard in California and I propagated it. Now it got hit with mealybug, I believe that's what that is. This looks like a scar but I don't know if it's active or not. I did treat this when I brought them out in the spring with hydrogen peroxide and then all of this new growth has happened two separate plants here and they both shot up when I got them out and, it, and they got into the heat. You know, it's a cactus and it loves heat. If I managed to get a greenhouse, these would go in there and they would be 20 feet tall by spring. So here are the two figs that split. Now if I had grabbed those this morning, it looks like they just split from the heat. These are my grapes so far. They've got seeds and I'm just going to put them through the juicer.
Now, if you're new to my channel, I have been here for about 20 months in this property after having a very tiny garden in California. Here I am building a sustainable homestead. I don't have farm animals yet, but I have very big gardens, too big, <laughs> that I have tried to develop. So I hope you'll subscribe and follow my journey here to have a sustainable homestead. done. Okay everyone, I am going to caramelize onions. So I am taking the skin off, saving all those skins. You can use these in making your own bone broth or of course you can just put them in your compost. You know it's your choice whether you want to chop onions for caramelizing but I like to keep them in rings. I just prefer that. Now this is going to cook way down, so the onions that I had, which were these and these, are not going to be enough. I want it to be like that when it starts. So I added four more. But basically I just do about three-eighths of an inch. Not too perfect with it. Onions have a mind of their own. I like working with sweet onions because they don't burn my <laughs> eyes so much. Okay. Now I'll clean up these other four and that should be enough for the first load. Okay. I've got my slow cooker set up, set for about 225 right now. There's nothing in here, but I'm going to be putting in unsalted butter. This is Vital Farms, and this is uh, raised on family farms. Unsalted butter, 85% butter fat. So, I'm going to go ahead and take a stick, and I'm going to, probably going to cut it. This was in the freezer. I store my butter in the freezer. So, I should have thought it out, but I didn't think of it in time. But it'll warm up. started with that. Those are touching the sides so they'll warm up. I'll put the other stick in as they start to cook down a little. Check it after about four hours and see how we're doing. Thank you. 
Okay, that was one hour at 110 degrees. These are Egyptian spinach leaves. And this was just my first foray. I got so many to do, but I just wanted to try it first, and then I'll grind this into powder. You can put that in drinks or soups to add nutrition. Smells strong. Okay, I'm starting out with a larger jar because there's going to be a lot more of this. Thanks so much for watching this channel and I hope you subscribe and I'll see you in part three.